oval and sad. Despite the damage you've done to yourself, the title appears lodged in your hippocampus. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. The innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. Perhaps the most famous human being ever to have lived. No amount of Commodore Red can wipe her sad smile from your brain thing. It has survived the deluge and haunts you still, and will haunt you forever as it haunts all men. The highest category of historic individual, an embodiment of the world's spirit. More, an innocence is elected to office by the founding party, a precedent that has taken place a mere six times in the entirety of history. The legal system of the Real Belt is built to accommodate an authentic rule should it coincide with our time. An innocence is infallible. The decisions made by one are not decisions. They are inevitabilities. What would have happened anyway? Only accelerated, packed into decades instead of centuries. An innocence is a continuous compressed event, a sacred human being. It is an honor and a glory to live when one is in office. No, we are alone. Terrifying is a term too emotionally charged for your semantic memory, or what remains of it. But although she is often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live, there was something ominous about Dolores Day, constantly surrounded by her theriers. She was the most socially secluded and least self-aware of all the innocences. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaigns she waged against the Mesk state. And then there were the resettlement programs. The Mesk state tried to detach itself from innocentic rule. Parts of the world were experiencing whiplash from accelerating into secularism. Her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Marguerite were problematic as well. Dissenters were suppressed by a military force she called the Army of Humanity. She adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Day often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb in icons such as this. She was also blonde, the blondest woman you have ever seen, with green eyes the color of the Pacific, Mare Interregnum. Little is known of her Marchese husband. It's as if he vanished from history after completing his role, which was to introduce Dolores Day to court. In conclusion, yes, there is something lonely, paranoid, and even terrifying that people seldom mention but feel when they think of her. This subtle terror is part of her iconography. Lieutenant Yefreiter, you've stood there for over five minutes. What are you thinking of, if I may ask? I don't know about that. It was a different time, a different war. Either way, this church, the coast in general, we shouldn't linger here. This isn't a good place to get lost in. We should conclude our business and move on. A jigsaw of broken shards falls into place in front of you. A ghostly reconstruction of the stained glass window. Before it was shattered, there was an older woman beneath the younger one. 
and a text, a light motif below them both. Below both women, in luminous black letters, Après la vie, mort. Après la mort, la vie de nouveau. And then, along the left side, Après le monde, la gré. Après le gré, le monde de nouveau. Death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. This exaltation is common in Dolorian sacralism. In the early years, it was even incorporated as the RCM slogan. No more, however. It was deemed subservient to use a strongly moral intern related motto. We already suspected of bootlicking. The sentence was also seen as too feminine. It was a macho thing. Justice, union, prudence and force. Not at all. The escutcheon on her throne says, Irene the Navigator. She is depicted as an older woman wearing thick rimmed eyeglasses, holding a golden rights apfel in one hand and a scepter in the other. This is the queen her innocence day advised. Above, she herself is whole. Small figures of wise men, common men, worshippers walk up the stairs to stand at her feet. Secret servicemen, thirty years, stand in a row guarding her. It must have taken years to produce this work in all its dizzying detail. Unknown. The mother of humanism towers above you. A wax painting on a cracked pane of glass. Nothing has changed in her expression. The shadow is a man. A man made of the same stuff as the carpentry of the building. He is studying you intently. The Crab Man. The man leaned forward a little, fixing you with a steady, unreadable gaze, then speaks. Habitual alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, Holmes. But don't worry, everything's gonna be all right. You come to the right place. Here you can receive the mother's love. And when you're ready, she will take your hand and lift you out of the despair at the bottom of that bottle. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do we really need to question him? I'm put off by this religious stuff he thinks, and maybe the ceiling climbing too. It's all very hard to square with the lieutenant's own view of reality. Hey, and what was that about the bottle again? You haven't even drank that much lately. Lay off it already. Shish. Oh yeah, sure. You don't know anything about alcohol use. 
You got it all under control, Way. I could smell the control all the way over here. Not all of it. I was like you once. You don't know all the havoc Albino is wrecking on your mind and your spirit. Necesita parar, el homie. You know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention to what the ceiling climber is saying. Look at these crazies. What is this shit? The only thing we need to talk about is how the mother can really help you, Holmes. This is the church of the mother of silence. You are welcome here. Other spoker? Oh. Esa viejita es muy estudiosa. <laughs> Don't know, Holmes. You just have to wait until she comes back, or... Or search through her radio computer. The ones in the tent outside, right? I see him. Think they scared of me. Nah, man. They look pretty funny. And I don't harm no one anymore. Anyway. Though he used to. A long time ago. Wouldn't bother me none to have them spin music in here. I'm usually way up there, imbibing. Might even be nice to have some company. He said that in spite of himself. He's more attached to the human than he'd like to think. Hey, her innocence Dolores Day liked little figurines, right? Liked holding little men between her fingers. Remember? You have the headless Falun Rider figurine. You should give it to her. Win her back. No, it would have been beautiful. Really tiny, thoughtful, clever. Whatever this was, it feels like you made the right choice not to peek into it. A machine stands in the corner, watched over by the figures on the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. The lieutenant doesn't say anything but you can sense that he doesn't like you meddling with the machine. <laughs> 